All right, so in this video, we're checking out the Toolkit RC P200 adjustable desktop power supply. So this is a pretty tiny power supply here, as you can see. And just for size reference, here is a just a computer mouse, just a PC mouse here, about the same size. And um, typical power supplies tend to be much larger. And so here's an example of like a server power supply that you can use to plug into your battery chargers and it converts AC over here and up with DC. This is obviously much heavier and much bigger. This will output like I think up to 1200 watts max on uh, I think it's 240 volts. Um, so if you're looking for something smaller but not quite as powerful, this one is uh, up to 100 watts AC and 200 watts DC, and it is adjustable, it's not fixed, which you can uh, adjust here in these dials. And uh, let me just show you what you get in the box. Not a whole lot. They sent me the wrong plug. This is an EU plug and requires one of these like laptop style plugs that I don't have, actually don't have. I, I thought I had one of these, but I have a different one that doesn't fit this uh, power supply. So I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate AC functions in this video, fortunately, you get the uh, banana plugs, four millimeter banana plugs to these alligator clips, and then this um, XT60 and bare wire here. And we can just clip these to the alligator clips to do a demo later. You do get a quick start guide. They do have a downloadable manual, uh, which you can get online. And here are the specs. I'm not going to read them off to you. You can so pause the video if you want to read them. I'll demonstrate this uh, each of these here shortly in the video. So taking a quick look at the power supply, got your AC input here in the back, 100 or 240 volts. Got an on-off switch here, and this only works for the AC. If you're plugging in a DC power source here, this uh, switch doesn't do anything. I got a cooling fan back here. DC input is 7 to 28 volts. Now. Um, this the reason that this is so tiny is is based on this uh, GAN technology or gallium nitride, and essentially that it is is uh, it's instead of it being uh, silicon based, which is what most other power supplies like this one here, all the switching equipment inside is silicon based. It's gallium nitride based, and apparently that's more efficient. So you get uh, less losses when it comes to switching from AC to DC power internally. I don't think this has anything to do with the DC input, only the AC switching. So um, not sure yet. I don't think you get any benefits on the DC, to, the DC side, only the AC side, which makes this a lot smaller because it's switching that AC power to DC output over here. And obviously we we're able to control that uh, variably on the amps and voltage. And on the front, of course, you got your dials here for controlling the settings. These are metal and they feel pretty nice, pretty solid. You got an on off switch here, uh, USB-C output, and it's, I think it does like power delivery and quick charge. It, all, it does pretty much all the modern protocols. And then you got your banana plugs here. And I forgot they do include this USB-C cable to um, USB-A, and this is for uh, firmware updates. And I did check it, and it's on version one. I think 1.02 was already out, so, uh, the firmware updates are the same as on other Toolkit RC products. You just plug this in over here, plug this into your computer. This will show up as a USB drive, and then you just copy the file over to the USB drive, and that will update the firmware internally on the uh, power supply. Okay, for the quick demo here, I'm just going to plug in a lithium ion pack here uh, to power it via DC, and then we just go ahead and press the button, turn it on. You got a nice little screen. I think it's like a 240 by 240 LCD screen. Uh, typical nice uh, layout user interface from Toolkit RC. You can adjust your voltages here with this dial. Up and down. And then same with the amps. Up and down. If you want to go into the settings, you long press the voltage dial. This brings up the power supply settings. And we'll go back out here. And if you want to see the um, stats for the USB port, you press the amperage uh, dial here and you see that we're, I know this thing plugged in so nothing going on there. I'll show you that here in a second. I'm going to actually do a demo of the um, on the uh, the banana plugs here. Okay so just for the sake of a uh, quick demo I just took the included 
XD60 and just uh, use the alligator clips on the bare ends here. This is not ideal. Obviously, you're going to get a lot of losses doing it this way. And it's obviously not safe. You could short circuit the uh, the circuit here. But uh, it just does it does have a, a short circuit uh, protection, over voltage or an over current protection internally. So if you does it detect that situation where you have a short, it will actually uh, power down the power supply. All right, you're going to plug this into this uh, M7 charger that I reviewed earlier. And you can see it's not turned on because there's no power flowing right now um, through the uh, wires until you do this, actually set it up and then uh, we'll go ahead and I'll actually set in the, put in the uh, power settings right now. So the max is 10 amps. So it's one 10 amps. And then on the voltage side, the max is going to be 30. So, so at 10 amps at 30 volts, that's going to be 300 watts, which is going to exceed the maximum even on DC. So I'm going to reduce that down to uh, 20 volts. And just so that you don't get that over current protection kicking in, I'm going to lower the amps down to about eight amps. And that should be fine. Should be it's going to be more than the 100 watts DC, but it should be enough for on the DC, no problem. And then to kick it on, you just short press the voltage button. And there we go. The charger has turned on, and we can see we're at 20 volts here, but we don't have a load, so we have 20 volts going out, but we have no current draw. And so I'm going to actually uh, start up a charge here. Okay, so I got a uh, little 3S LiPo. I'm going to just charge up a little bit. It's not quite empty. Actually, not, not totally full, but it probably will uh, end the charge pretty soon. So let's go ahead and charge this at, uh, whoops, yeah. Charge this up at 1 amp. Let's start. Okay. And you can see here, Drawing about uh, seven point about seven amps here at this voltage and amp reading, and saying about half an amp of draw. So there should be also corresponding over here as well about 0.4 amps over here. Yeah, so that should be matching up pretty nicely. Obviously, we can go way more if I put in a much bigger battery. Um, so if you want to go up higher with a much bigger battery, which I'm not actually demonstrating here, you can you can certainly do that. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick demo of the uh, USB charging function. This cable is not included. It's a USB type C to USB type C. And I'm going to be uh, charging up this Jackery uh, power bank. It's this giant power bank here. It's way bigger than the power supply. Okay, as soon as you turn or plug it in, it, it's automatically turned on. You can see the uh, uh, graph there going up. And then if you, you can see here, it's USB. Uh, about five volts and three amps. That's what uh, we should be drawing. That's what the charger circuit is drawing. But if you want to see more stats, just press the amp button here, and you can see it's uh, more statistics. About five volts at about three amps shows the time, how much uh, I guess the capacity is being sent out, and then it shows the protocol here. It says it's normal, which is regular USB. Uh, if it's one of the other ones like uh, power delivery or QC, then it's going to jump up in voltage probably to like. 9 nine volts or 20 volts. I think 20 volts is the max on USB Type-C. All right, lastly, I just want to quickly show you the settings here. You can change your step voltage, step current, curve time, lowest input. So, for example, um, you, I'm on DC power here, and you don't want to go be below a certain voltage. This is a forest pack, uh, so I don't, I don't want to go below 12 volts on a forest pack, so I can increase that to... 12 volts, and then this uh, power supply will basically shut off at that point so it doesn't damage the battery pack. And then you have your safe temperature setting here, backlight, beep, volume, language, theme style. So you can change it from uh, white background to dark background. And then you can hit this to reset your factory settings. And then this is the current firmware on here. It's version one. So yeah, if you want to uh, get the latest version, I think it's 102 currently on the website. Yeah, it's pretty easy to um, update, but yeah, uh, actually I kind of like the dark background. I'm going to keep that. That's pretty much it. 
Um, I've actually, this is my first desktop power supply. So uh, in terms of like what this is going to be useful for, obviously you can charge batteries with it, with a charger, but you can, you know, you can power up anything that requires DC power and be within those parameters of uh, basically up to 10 amps and uh, 20 volts or 30 volts, depending upon you know, the maximum output rating here. And it could be used for pretty much anything that requires a variable uh, output for voltage and current between those, between that range and uh, could be a lot of things. So, um, you know, I, I've been, you know, like mostly for like things like testing, it could be useful for if you want to, if there's like certain particular applications that require uh, it's a power supply with uh, basically if you want to adjust the voltage or amperage setting a little bit to see what happens, you can do that for testing. And that's why this could be useful for those type of scenarios. I never had a power supply before, so I've never had a chance to use that. But you know, we might see this in a future video for certain kinds of tests that could be useful. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.